TMS is uh, stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation and it has been a modality of uh, treatment that's been with us for several several years but it's only now gradually finding its way into psychiatry uh, essentially at the minute it is uh, approved for the management of uh, depression uh, and difficult to treat depression and uh, what it does essentially is uh, from the functional neuroanatomy that's a little mouthful word that I've used but what I mean by that is from the electrical side of things of the brain what we know is that some parts of the brain specifically the frontal lobe of the brain is not that well functioning in a state of uh, uh, depression and with transcranial magnetic stimulation the aim is that we use a magnetic coil which just generates a very small magnetic current that stimulates the superficial or slightly uh, 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 some tissues of the brain in the frontal lobes and once we start doing that repeatedly over a period of time it starts to activate networks that we know are not functioning that well in uh, someone who's uh, suffering with depression so that's what it does uh, and that's how the symptoms of uh, uh, depression can be improved. Uh, TMS, initially when it came out, for uh, some strange reasons, anything to do with the brain and the brain stimulation was being compared, uh, or in fact TMS was being compared with ECT, which is the electric convulsive uh, therapy. Uh, and I think that was highly misplaced in a way because we cannot compare apples with oranges, uh, as you know. Uh, so TMS, when it was approved in the US, it was being seen as uh, a treatment for someone who has had several antidepressant medications and they're not getting better. And uh, before thinking about ECT, TMS was being positioned but over the years what we have started to notice from several patients who've been treated with TMS right across the globe is that the best position perhaps for TMS is not later in the patient journey but early on so someone who hasn't responded to one or two antidepressants then that would be straight away uh, a, a time to start thinking of offering TMS uh, to them. So in terms of uh, uh, how often the TMS treatments are, now with the standard protocols that we used to have, uh, each treatment session is, is, is around 40 minutes and has to be done every day of the week uh, for about four weeks. So it takes about you know, 30 odd sessions uh, repeatedly to start noticing uh, a, a difference. In fact, the difference is in, in clinical experience uh, from what I've seen is that within two weeks or so, people start feeling uh, the benefit of it if they are the ones who will respond. But as TMS has grown and more research evidence is coming through along with the clinical experience, the protocols have actually changed. And now we have a, a shortened version of the protocol, which makes each treatment session uh, as little as 20 minutes. And with the more recent uh, protocols where we are in a position to use certain altered frequencies or we call in the TMS uh, language, certain high frequencies, uh, which is called the theta burst stimulation. Uh, one treatment session can last about three to five minutes uh, and people can uh, actually have 
uh, up to two or three sessions in the same day of the theta burst simulation, which means that the overall treatment duration can be significantly reduced with similar results. So uh, uh, that is something new that is happening in the TMS world. Equally, now we are looking at uh, uh, individualized or tailor-made uh, treatment packages within the TMS world. And by that, I mean that uh, technically we could look at uh, the brain by looking at the different brain frequencies and see which part of the brain seems to be less functional than what is anticipated and that particular area of the brain can be modulated by TMS to improve the results. So, uh, which takes us into uh, uh, stratified psychiatry or should I say individualized tailor-made tailor treatments for that particular individual. The risks with TMS generally are negligible. Uh, I think in the uh, literature there initially there was a slight uh, emphasis on TMS leading to seizures but several several number of uh, patients that have been treated with TMS uh, they've been very 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 few uh, incidents of uh, uh, seizures with TMS to the point that the international consensus on TMS is now considering to remove the risk of seizures with TMS because the incidence and the statistics of that are significantly lower than someone who is prescribed an antidepressant. So, which means that the chances of someone having a seizure with antidepressant therapy may be higher than what they would have with TMS. Uh, in other words, is much, much, much more safer treatment than what people sometimes perceive it to be. And the other common, uh, perhaps side effects, if we may uh, call them, are uh, is uh, many people may have a mild headache after the treatment session, uh, but that can quite easily be managed by using good ear plugs uh, during the treatment session making sure that they are hydrated and also by just simply taking some paracetamol uh, for headaches if they have that. Most people tend to get uh, those side effects such as the headaches in the initial few days of treatment but then very soon uh, that sort of dies down. When we talk of success rate uh, for TMS, we've got to understand uh, certain basics. And those basics are that one of the biggest trials that has been done in the treatments for depression is the STAR-D trial, which without going into the minutiae or details of that trial, the essence of that trial told us that the first line treatment for any depression generally is an antidepressant tablet. But as we've seen in clinical practice and also in STAR-D, that with each treatment, with each antidepressant that is added on, the remission rates, or in other words, people getting better, actually starts becoming lower and lower and lower. Uh, and equally, the chances of relapses over a period of time if they were to stop also increase and it becomes difficult to treat. And the benefit of TMS is that the remission rates or the benefit that we can get from that treatment is much, much, much higher than what the antidepressants can provide in a sequential manner. So essentially in a very very uh, simplistic way a third of the people would respond to a first antidepressant a further third of that may respond to a second antidepressant and another third may respond to 
subsequent treatments. So in the end, the remission rates are we're not really increasing the recovery or the remission from uh, uh, depression with adding on each antidepressant. Whereas with if we were to add in the TMS, that remission rates can go up significantly higher for those people and their quality of life improves. So I think uh, TMS is a, a more innovative way of improving the remission from the depressive disorders for people.